from the author of Spinsterella, a strange and unusual romance, comes Spellbound, a darker shade of black. Get Spellbound this Halloween in paperback and ebook and online booksellers everywhere. Taking a look at the images in Netflix's Luke Cage and the CW Supergirl, you see two images of black men. And those two images show us a very interesting picture regarding the presentation and perception of the black male image. Now, when you watch the CW Supergirl, which is created by white people, you see one view of black manhood. And when you see Netflix's Luke Cage, which is produced by black people, you see a completely different perception and image of black masculinity and black manhood. Now, when you watch the CW's Supergirl, you see black masculinity, but you see it through the eyes of white people. And when you watch Netflix's Luke Cage, you see the image of black masculinity as depicted by black people. And when you watch something like Netflix's Luke Cage, and from what I've seen in the few clips I've seen on YouTube so far, you see a more balanced picture of black masculinity on Netflix's Luke Cage. You see a more humanized image of black masculinity on Netflix's Luke Cage. You see a more comprehensive image of black manhood in Netflix's Luke Cage. I notice when black people create a television show for black people, in many cases who are objective, you get to see that balanced and humanized image like we're seeing right now with Luke Cage. We're not seeing a stereotype of on the Netflix Luke Cage show. We're seeing a rich, multi-dimensional character in his own, trying to protect his community, trying to support his community, and trying to look out for the people of his community. This is the image of black masculinity that we have not seen on television for years. And this is why a lot of people are so excited about this show in the way a lot of people were excited about The Cosby Show way back in 1984, because that show, about 30 years ago, was pretty much, again, presenting that balanced and humanized image of black people. And here we are seeing it in Netflix's Luke Cage. Now, when we look at the CW Supergirl, we see a black man on a white show, and we see the image of black masculinity as white liberals see it. Now, when you look at your James Olsen, when he was brought on Supergirl, the, this adaptation, he was brought on to show that the world of Superman was supposed to be more diverse. And the whole idea behind the James Olsen character was to say that he was going to grow up and show that he was going to step out from behind Superman's cape and stop being Superman's awkward teenage pal and start being his own man in a similar vein of Dick Grayson as he began his journey from Robin to Nightwing back in the 1980s. However, on this road on Supergirl, he's made several stumbles. And the reason why he's made several stumbles has to do with the comic book audience and the television audience. Now, when Supergirl premiered, it premiered to a record 19 million viewers. However, as they saw this black James Olsen on the screen as the love interest, a lot of people clearly got turned off because by the November sweeps, Supergirl's numbers pretty much plummeted by 50%. And I believe a lot of that has to do with racist fanboys and many television viewers who aren't as open-minded as the producers of Berlanti Productions um, believe that they are. Because what happened in this case was a lot of people got turned off at the whole idea of the good and wholesome, blonde-haired, blue-eyed Supergirl having a relationship with James Olsen. And they further got turned off when they found out that black James Olsen had had an interracial relationship with Lois Lane's sister, Lucy Lane. And those two things pretty much alienated a large group of viewers. And that led to the producers retooling the character because James Olsen was supposed to start out as the love interest on Supergirl. He was supposed to be a leading man and they were setting him up to be a leading man, again, in the vein of Dick Grayson as he began his evolution from Robin being the leader of the Teen Titans back in the 1980s to Nightwing being his own man starting in the late 80s and into the early 1990s. And they were going to try to organically progress the James Olsen character in a similar fashion. Unfortunately, many racist comic fans and many television viewers who weren't as open-minded as they thought they were decided, you know, they don't want to see that, and that's why the producers wound up retooling the show, 
And over the summer and the spring, we started to see the James Olsen's character's role start to diminish on Supergirl. And we started to see him less and less and less on the show. And I had pretty much looked at it as the second season started, and I started to say, you know, it looks like they're getting ready to write this character out. And with the introduction of Tyler Hoechlin as Superman, he did an amazing job as Superman, but it looked like he was getting ready to take James Olsen back with him to Metropolis because I watched the season premiere and the whole Supergirl and James Olsen love story was pretty much um, getting ended. They pretty much put a period at the end of it and decided to move on. And the James Olsen character looked like he was getting ready to fade into the background. They were getting ready to write him off. Unfortunately, that wasn't the case. And it looks like with this depiction of James Olsen is following a pattern of another character I saw on a television show way back in 2000 called Family Law. Um, this was a show back um, in 2000, and they had introduced the Sally Richardson, actress Sally Richardson, as um, this black lawyer called Vivica Foster. And she started out having a significant role as a guest spot in several episodes, and eventually they made her into a regular. But then after they made her into a regular, what they did was they pretty much cut her character down to nothing. They pretty much diminished her to nothing. And then later on, they tried to force an awkward um, relationship between her and the Tony Danza Salerno character, which didn't go anywhere. And by that time, the show had pretty much gotten canceled. This is the parallel I see between Black James Olsen and Vivica Foster. And what, they did, what they're doing right now is in the same vein, because what they're doing right now with the James Olsen character, now that they can't make him the love interest, they're trying to awkwardly shoehorn him into a position that pretty much does not allow his character to grow organically and does not really fit into the story. Yes, he's still there. He's a black character, but he's not being presented in a way that, you know, presents a positive image of black manhood or the black image because what they're doing now is like they're giving him an affirmative action hire because they're saying Cat Grant is taking a leave of absence and what's happening in that is He's being put into a position he's clearly not qualified for. Your James Olsen, who just came to Catco in the first season, has literally no writing experience, no publishing experience, and he's going to be running a magazine. And what we saw in last Monday's, this Monday's episode pretty much was one of the most saddest acts I ever saw. You had your James Olsen, who has just been put into this position awkwardly by the writers, and he gets emasculated by a lower level employee, Morgan Edge. And it was just really sad to watch this black man, you know, he was given this position of power and this white male comes in and pretty much undercuts him and undercuts his authority. And when in the real business world, if the guy allowed somebody to undercut his authority like that, his whole office would have absolutely no respect for him. They would have no respect for his leadership and no respect for his authority because a man has to come out from day one being the leader. He has to pretty much establish his leadership and establish his standard. And when I look at the way this James Olsen character has been depicted on screen, it shows, again, that clear difference between the way black characters are depicted by black producers and white producers. When, when a black producer comes out, again, we get this balanced, humanized, multidimensional image. When we get this image presented by white people, we get an image that's, you know, half-hearted. Yes, he comes out strong in the beginning, but because viewers get upset at the idea of seeing that strong, masculine black male in a leadership position, especially when it's related to white women, they start minimizing him, downplaying him, and then oftentimes they put them in token positions where they have the, the um, title of, the, of a powerful job, but then they don't have the power of that job nor do they have the responsibility of that job. And it pretty much weakens the image of black manhood on screen. And this is what I've seen, you know, in many of these Berlanti shows and many other um, white television shows like Arrow, where we see the image of Mr. Terrific, who in the comics is presented as a strong, masculine, highly intelligent man who can pretty much, you know, go to toe-to-toe -to -toe with any of these superheroes because he's a peak champion athlete, He's the third world's third most intelligent man, and he's highly inventive, highly creative, and highly resourceful in the comics. However, when we get to the Arrow show, he's a bumbling, stumbling, incompetent idiot. 
and that again pretty much downplays the image of black masculinity in the hopes of elevating characters like Green Arrow to make them look like they're bigger while making the black man appear smaller just like they're doing right now on Supergirl they're making the they put the black man in a powerful position but they do things to undermine his masculinity and his position as a man and they're, they're, they're emasculating these men black men on television and what's really sad about it is that these white television shows this is what they do all the time they always make efforts to emasculate the image of black men and in the case of some black women like what i saw with the sally richardson character on vivica foster they even do this to the image of black women they do this because they don't want to, people to see black people in a balanced and humanized way they don't want to see black people presented in that rich and humanized way we saw on Netflix's Luke Cage. And when we look at Netflix's Luke Cage, um, from the clips I have seen, because I do not have Netflix and I've been out of work, I can't afford Netflix or internet access, but from the few clips I've seen on YouTube, the show, you know, is one of the ones that's really giving us, again, that balanced and humanized image. And, I, and from what I've seen, you know, I can see why Netflix's server crashed, because this show, in its first season, has done, from the few clips I have seen, you know, it looks like the production values are rock solid. The writing looks like it's pretty solid. And compared to what we're getting on CW with these emasculated images of James Olsen and Mr. Terrific, it, it, it's, it's just a difference between night and day in the presentation of the image of the African-American man and African-Americans overall. That's all I have to say for this video. You can comment, rate, and subscribe.